Extra, extra, read all about it. Company claims to be space program despite never being to space. Hey guys, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program! Twitchy's modded career mode. My name is Twitchy, and we are in with uh, Gene Kerman here to have a look at the contracts because, as the small human said at the beginning of this episode, we haven't actually made it to space yet. We haven't even broken the film of the atmosphere that lays over this tiny, tiny planet that we find ourselves upon. So maybe it's time to get on and fix that particular issue. Yes, indeed. All we need to do is get over 75 kilometers. And to do that, we are going to use Project Ikea. Or at least that's the name of this payload up on top here. You can see we have three, three science experiments on top of it. The uh, mystery goo, temperature, and atmospheric scans we've got four parachutes to try and make sure we can come back home two normal parachute two drogue parachutes and of course we have communications and batteries you also know a decoupler underneath a radial decoupler pointed the wrong way this is technology we've seen before and the triple boosters to really make sure we can get up into orbit so loading up we have a little bit of a wobble issue but that is no problem and straight away we are rid of our srbs these are only really designed to take us up a few kilometers so it's all working out pretty well for us halfway through our fuel and we are up to 20 kilometers in the air already looking like we are going to make a, a beautiful transition up into orbit now you may remember last time whilst we were sending jebediah out to the very depths of wherever we could send him we held on to the rest of the rocket stage because its mass would take us further up into orbit than our small thing would do because the smaller your spacecraft the more it fills the air resistance if you will uh, it's, it's not quite, it's the real, relative air resistance. So we kept hold of that up until the last moment where we needed to fire engines and blow off those bottom fuel tanks that we had because, you know, there's a reason I had to use that sideways the coupler up on top there. That beautiful, beautiful angelic sounds of orbit uh, let us know that we actually have a broken out into space. And I'll go through and take all the science uh, that we can, making sure that I've got a pretty tasty circular orbit. We uh, were in danger of pushing the Apple apps up a little bit too far from where I was, so I decided to ease my way around the orbit just a little bit more so that we can make sure that Perry apps goes up. And just like that, we are in orbit. Simple as. I, I absolutely love it. So now, thanks to the, the restraints that I have placed upon myself, we need to try and pinpoint this landing. I need to get within 100 kilometers or so of the KSC to be able to actually uh, recover it. We, we've got a mod on called uh, Not In My Backyard, NIMBY, um, so, which enables us to set a limit on how far away from beacons, that is the Kerbal Space Center, the Desert Launch Pad or Woomerang Launch Pad, uh, how far away from one of those we want to be before we uh, allow ourselves to recover. And this was something I wanted to do to like sort of push forward my plane making technology and uh, stuff like that. All right, so we have what I call return trajectory alpha. Uh, it's where we go over the top of the desert, pull down our orbit so that it looks like we're going to crash halfway through the Kerb Atlantic. And that should get you to the Kerbal Space Center, nine times out of ten. We then go and do something that is considered a mistake here. I go and start transmitting my science home because I want to make sure that even if we crash, we get some science. Unfortunately, I overdid that. And you can see that we have zero electric charge to open up our parachutes with. This is obviously a bit of a problem, but thankfully I have made quick saves and stuff and I was going to go back, but my viewers on stream are a bunch of savages. They, they always like to see me fail and they like to see the results of my failure. Though, for you as well, YouTube, there's an explosion. Beautiful. All right, so we're going to quick save our way back here, and uh, I'm not going to do the science transfer this time. I'm not, I'm not going to try and transmit it home. We're just going to trust in the laws of Newton. We're going to hope that the reactions all balance out and we end up being where we're supposed to be. I suppose it's the, the laws of Kepler, isn't it, in Kerbal Space Program? That's it's, it's all really equivalent when you get down to it, so no problem. Drogue shoots are away, just to slow us down enough, and watching us come through the sunset is a pretty, pretty tasty. Oh, it's just pretty. Let's just be honest about that. And we land down. KSC is in view. If I was to be honest, it's a little bit further away than I would have liked, but NIMBY tells me it's all good, so we will go with that. I actually had a great deal of um, internal conflict about this. 
uh, I ended up having to turn around to the stream and be like, alright guys, I, I need your help here. Is this too close? Is this too far away? Uh, sorry, is this close enough? Is it too far away? And everyone told me that they considered it close enough. I mean, if we take a moment to look on the space center, uh, space station screen here, sp well, I had it right the first time, center screen, you can see that the ship is actually pretty close. The super observant of you would have noticed on the way up with Project Akia that we got a temperature and pressure scan of the upper atmosphere. Now thankfully those could just be sent back almost free of charge from uh, for science and stuff. So we've got ourselves 53 science points to be spent here. And I'm going to spend a lot of time um and, and ahhing about which one is I'm actually going to get. But we end up going for general construction. Not only does it lead us towards having all sorts of wonderful things in the future, but we also get two science packs, the, uh, the, the material science and... Uh, uh, actually, that was the water pump, my bad. Uh, and we also get clamps, struts, and stack decouplers. I think that was probably the, the biggest returns we could have got for our science right there. And I'm feeling pretty good about the choices we made. And this leads us to move on to another mission. Operation IKEA.5. This is a mission uh, that we have just done, but upgraded with all the parts we've got. You can see that I've dropped down to two solid boosters. This is to allow ourselves room for decouplers between our different stack stages. It's very useful and very helpful. You can see the uh, sideways decoupler at the top has also been re replaced with a stack decoupler. But I feel like we're making almost a, uh, a solid, normal vehicle here. I also do need to point out that the names have been provided by my stream audience. And now that I stop and think about it, probably should have saved Operation IKEA for a Kerbal Attachment System vessel. One that we, like, put together ourselves. But all deep name regrets aside, our flaming javelin throws itself up out of the atmosphere. We circularize up pretty well and we go around for a single orbit. Oh, it's looking beautiful. Up until the point where we're actually coming down back in through the atmosphere, and I noticed that actually we're a little bit early. We are flaming over the front of the desert. On the way down, I'm like, ah, oh, guys, we've, we've messed up. We've missed it. Let me reload this. And then someone in the chat, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who, turns around and goes, well, why do you have these restrictions in place if you're just going to revert all the time? You might as well not have the restrictions. And I was like, you know what, anonymous chat user, I agree with you. So, long story short, we end up with a probe on the side of a hill, the other side of the mountains from the KSC. Hmm. So this situation is going to require some extra science. We throw uh, all the science that I have available to me on just this, like, probe core and some structural parts. Send it out to the runway. Grab the science. Just so I can start buying some avionic parts. So we really need some way of making a plane. Unfortunately, I, it's the... Not, not the greatest. When you get started with the plane parts, uh, you, you don't have good wings. You don't have any sort of control surfaces. The SAS is just a shocking to try and work with. You've got no landing gear. Uh, the pilots are generally subpar, but the, actually, we did not send a pilot along with this one. Let's talk through this mission. So we've got Gilly Kerman in the seats. Gilly Kerman, a scientist extraordinaire. Uh, that's because obviously we want to be able to get the science out of the uh, the probe on the other side of the mountains there. We took off with an SRB because the Weasley does not have the grunt when it gets going to be able to launch itself. Another problem and the sole reason I had to uh, pop out my parachutes there is that we could not pull up. The SAS was not strong enough for the amount of wing surface we had. I also have put a vertical facing solid rocket booster in the middle of my craft here for some sort of VTOL capability because obviously with the lack of any sort of landing gear as I say we've got to try and like bring this down to a stop with the parachutes much as I have and then try and get ourselves back in the air for uh, a new launch and it turns out actually this plan I mean it was pretty bad uh, if I to be honest with you the wings that we had available to us those li literal just little fins on the side there Despite using all of those, making sure my center of mass was uh, my center of lift and center of mass were well balanced, so we could use the SAS to steer rather than trying to use control surfaces and stuff like that. And just all in all, I kind of felt like this this whole recovery plan might not have been the strongest given the technology that we have right now. Technically, just a test flight anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We're going to recover this guy, and we're going to go have a look at the mission control and see if there's any way we can earn ourselves some money, some reputation, and science all in one package. And let's start having a look at, like, the um, go and do a report at a certain altitude. Turns out that all the altitudes were above 10 kilometers. You can kiss goodbye to that if you don't have anything above the Weasley engines. So we ignore all of that. And then start having a look through the test this part at this certain altitude. And I've got a question for you guys out there. Anybody ever do these... These, uh, these contracts, I always tend to avoid them. I take them as like a very much last resort if I can't find any other contracts. 
that I uh, I find appealing. I find myself much more likely either to take one of the science or the tourism or something like that, particularly one of the milestones, but I suppose that's kind of doing like the story mode if you will so that that kind of goes without saying but yeah i ask you what what's what's your guys favorite contract so how do you normally end up doing this anyway i end up taking this contract which is to go to the kerbin shores and grab a whole bunch of science in various different situations we've got to be landed and we've got to be in the water so I, it kind of feels like something that we can do. We can fly a, a ship out to a very minimal distance. And as the shores is literally the waterline of the KSC there, I kind of feel like we can do it. With Operation Go and Get the Science Back with the worst plane parts possible being a bit of a failure, uh, or at least being postponed for future work, uh, it's time for what is becoming one of my favorite segments in the, the whole of this series that I'm doing. It's time for... Yes, indeed, we are building some ridiculous contraptions at pretty much the end of every episode so far, so I'm going to go with it being a full-blown segment here. We have, to, as I say, try to try and get to the shores, so my plan is for a, I'm going to say a two-stage VTOL, but that's not quite, it's one stage, two, two-hop VTOL. It's something that I'm going to, going to fly out to the land, then fly out to the water, and it should work out pretty well for us. So we've got the command pod on top for the scientists. We've got a propulsion system down below with a whole a bunch of fuel on there, which actually was a little bit of a tighter margin than I intended to get. We made sure that we had all the science that the uh, contract needed, and then we started lifting our way up. Now, my plan is literally just to get somewhere close to to the shoreline. There was a few few opportunities before this where I um, was a little bit too conservative with my flight path and ended up eating through my fuel far, far too quickly. I mean, who would have guessed using rocket propulsion to hover yourself up at a certain height and then very slowly, laterally make your translation across was a fuel intensive process? I mean, I was shocked, I really was. So anyway, right now what we're trying to do is just kind of hold ourselves in some sort of holding pattern, if you will. I've flown over, I'm trying to figure out where we are going to be over the shores biome. Uh, I'm also talking to people at the same time, but I've decided that now is the time. We are close enough to being actually on the beach. We pop our parachutes and start drifting down. You can see that the uh, bottom icon on that, that whole bar of icons to the right is telling me that we've got a whole bunch of science that we can get at this point. No, 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 that's not what we want, though. We want to get the science from uh, this point. So we're now uh, landed, uh, meeting half the criteria for half of the, uh, the, the the contract that we've got. And all we need to do is go through and do all of these. Now I'm clicking on each thing individually to see uh, what all of them are, see if there's anything interesting. It turns out, no, there wasn't. Uh, the other thing was that hitting the collect all button doesn't do what you expect it to do. What we've actually got to do is deploy all, which kind of makes sense. All right, we are going to take off in a slightly more aggressive manner this time. Uh, and use the second set of parachutes that we had to try and drop ourselves into the water, which actually works out incredibly well. I, I was kind of expecting to have a bit more of a trouble there, but with the a very quick and timely collection of all the different data, sciences, and everything else we need to do here, that is one more contract finished off and ready to go. Beautiful. And I suppose all that is left to say is to say thank you very much for joining for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you next time. We're going to try and figure out how to get IKEA 0.5 back. Uh, we've gone and got ourselves some science, so now is the time for the future development of our aviation program. But I will see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!